Flip House Gold. Last time we were here, I had to kick the door in to get us in. Now this baby's done. We even got a free sidewalk, guys. That was a leftover concrete from the porch. How sweet is that? Go inside and check it out. We own it, so. When you walked in, right there was a stove. There's a bunch of clutter in here, and there was a double door. Took the double door out, and put in the Furman arch. Even though the property had real hardwood floors, it was gonna be hard to match. So we just went with a life proof overlay. And here's where it got real, real, real tricky. If you remember from the first video, there was a door over here that you walked through. If you're Paul, you fell down in it. Oh, shit. And then you walked over to a burnout kitchen. All of that's gone, been cut out. Brand new cabinets, brand new handles, tile backsplash, new faucet, making it rain. Whole deal's been redone, guys. Vent a hood, plumbed into the, the ceiling up here. We rolled through the back here. I don't know if y'all remember or if we got any footage from back here, but it was a big, long, basic, basically a back porch that had been enclosed. Um, hot water heater was here in its own cabinet. Still got the hot water heater, added in a place for washer and dryer. Mainly the struggles of this place was it was a money pit. We ended up at $52 a square foot on this rehab, a 1902 build. Should have known it was gonna happen that way. We bought it for 33,000, um, got like 70 in it now. It's just been a money pit. Got it listed for 160, got its first showing today. Hopefully it sells. If not, um, it's gonna make a great rental. Rent for $1,400 a month all day. We haven't even tested the rental market yet, but we probably will here pretty soon. Now, if you remember this particular bedroom, you can walk through a door over here and get to the living room. All that's been closed off. I don't know what it was about older houses, but in these scenarios, they had just like hallways that would go through the, pro uh, through the, through the bedrooms. Hallways are useless. Um, square footage, I hate hallways. So close this off, open it all the way up from the front of the house to the kitchen, um, where you have a dining room, living room, whatever setup you want over there. But you know, unfortunately we couldn't figure out a way to add a third bedroom. So we only got a two bedroom property. This is the master bedroom. That door over there used to lead to a porch. Actually, I don't think there was a door here. Now it's a bathroom. This is a really, really, really neat design. Got the tile showers, toilet right here. I don't know why the contractor didn't put a double vanity, but what we'll probably end up having to do to get this property sold is put in another vanity right here. Things I hate about the property. One, I hate that this switch is where the mirror goes because that means we're going to have to have a mirrored switch and a mirrored uh, plug right here. Probably the only place could have put it, but don't like that. Also don't have a mirror because it's going to take a custom glass company to come out and do it. And whether or not we put in a second vanity or not, we're going to have to center this up with the sink. These are just little things that are always going to happen on every project. No matter how many of them you do, no matter how much planning you do, you know, I would rather fix a mistake like this that the customer points out, which I do have a feeling they'll point it out, then slow down progress by coming in here and micromanaging a contractor. I love what they did with this. I think this is a new tub as well. I think everything here is new. I love what they did with it. Unfortunately, I don't like the layout of the bathroom. Not much we could do. Toilet's still in the same place. I think if they had changed the way that the door swings, make the door swing out into that room, could have done more with this space. Those are the things that bother me. Again, we're missing a mirror. The door swing, we got room to move this over, so we'll probably just end up moving this over. Ah, uh, they got it trimmed in though. So maybe we just end up moving the light bar over, but then again, it's gonna encroach on the shower. I hate this problem, but it's not gonna be a problem until the client that's gonna buy the house makes it a problem. Until then, it's just gonna be something that uh, hopefully they miss. Need a different co plug cover right here. So a lot of people make a big deal out of everything and make a big long punch out list. I refuse to do that. I wanna leave something easy like this for the client that wants to buy the property to find. That way they're not beating me up on the big stuff. Something easy, get it fixed. The backyard. This is my, my work right here. This thing was a mess. There was trees all the way down this power line right here. Took all those trees out, hauled them to my personal house, lit them on fire. Spent a lot of time out here grading, regrading this land, um, making all the water run away from the house and to our little ditch that we got over there. You can still see I got a little pile of dirt. Um, hell, 
we hauled off a bunch of dirt last time we were out here. I think we got that uh, got that little bit of footage, but made this a, a, a lot better landscape wise. I mean, there ain't much landscaping that needs to happen. If you look across the street here, there's a vacant house, there's a vacant house. And no matter how much grass and landscaping you put into this, you're still gonna be surrounded by vacant houses. A lot of people that scares them. I just see opportunity. There's not a lot of inventory in this town. Currently on the market in this town, there's only three properties listed for sale. And this is one of them. So, and this is the only one that's a, that's a smaller square footage. All the rest of them are big Victorian homes. So they're not even comparable to this. If you wanna live in Mart, Texas right now, you're gonna to have to look at this house if you're considering moving in. Look at this fucking driveway, son. This fucking driveway was a lot of time and money right here, baby. A lot of time and money. We got a lot of footage of this driveway shenanigans, what it took to put a little bit of rock down here. We went the cheap route. We went with the free rock. We should have just called and got a $300 load of rock because um, I bet you we spent way more than $300 worth of time to get this rock here. I'm just happy you sealed that hole. Yeah, that you fell in? Yeah. That was the first thing we did, Paul. Okay, that's good. We said city folk can't walk through here without falling in the hole. It's very obvious. Oh, shit. He must have been distracted. Were you texting and walking? No, I was filming. Running a camera? Yeah. Nobody, nobody shouted out, hey, there's a hole? No. He stepped over it and walked, let you walk into it. That was rough, Paul. Yeah. I hate that for you. If this deal came up today, we wouldn't do this deal. Not because of the price or not because of the, the money it took to do it, just because we don't have to take on a project this big to make the same amount of money. In last year's real estate market, it was super hot. You had to find a super distressed asset to be able to make money. In today's market, you don't need a distressed asset. You need a distressed seller. This particular property we bought via snail mail, literally wrote letters back and forth with somebody that was in prison and closed on the deal, basically closed on it through snail mail. Everything was mailed in USPS and everything was sent back out USPS, including the check to fund the deal. And it took forever to get that funding done. So during the amount of time it took to get this property closed, the market shifted on us. And had we been able to back out, we would have, but knowing that the person's in prison, knowing that they needed the money to hire a lawyer or do whatever it was they were gonna do with the money. We didn't wanna back out on it, knowing that we had the crews and skill set to still make a dollar. And if it doesn't work out in today's economy selling it, we'll rent it out and sell it in tomorrow's economy once the interest rates go back down. So we have multiple exits, underwrote it extremely well in that regard. Um, and feel very comfortable with it. So we'll, we move forward with the project. But if we got this lead today, we wouldn't even put it under contract. We would say, nah, you know, we'll do something else. We would go do a, a easier project. Corey Thompson here, Roughneck Real Estate. If you want to see more projects like these, go down, like, subscribe, all the things, and let us know in the comment section what you think about our project and the free sidewalk and the badass fucking driveway. The driveway is the best part, I do agree. And I can't wait to hear what y'all have to say about it. Go to roughneckrealestate.com for all of your hard money needs and we'll loan you money so you can do your own projects like this. See you on the flip side.